Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Well, hey there, and welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I'm so excited you're joining me today. I'm Jessica, and this is episode 94, and I'm going to be discussing integrating music into reading. I get asked this question a lot about how to bring books into the music room or poetry, or you get asked by your administration to do something with integrating reading into your classroom, you know, into music, and you have no idea where to get started. So we're going to talk about all those things today. In fact, I have a series of podcast episodes that are not going to air in order, but I'm going to be talking about integrating music into math, into science, into social studies, and into foreign language even. So today is just about reading. There is a blog post to go right along with this that I wrote, I don't remember when, a couple years ago, but um, it's just called How to Integrate Music and Reading for Kids. And if you just go to the domesticmusician.com and go to the very bottom in the search bar, you could just type in music in reading integration, and you'll see this blog post pop up, or it is also in the show notes. So I am not going to read this blog post word for word, but I want to let you know that if you are wanting this in written form, it is there as well. So the first thing I, I want to tell you is I was amazed when I took, and I believe I talked about this on another podcast episode with a guest before, but if not, that's okay too. But anyways, I think I did somewhere back in the day. But basically what I was going to say is I, before I took ORF level one, I had heard people talking about, you know, reading books in their music room and doing all kinds of activities with speech pieces. And I'm like, why, how, what do you mean? Or I would see poems, but I have no idea what to do with them. Besides, obviously I know how to read a poem, but I didn't know how to make it musical. It wasn't until I took my ORF level one and in, and then some other trainings that really showed me how to bring literature and different books and into the music room and not just how to bring them into the music room, but what to do with them to make them musical. So uh, just like everything else I say, <laughs> this these are just suggestions. And so I want you to take what works for you and then what works for your students and do that. All right. Also, when it comes to resources, I have a couple episodes I've even done on this podcast about that. You will see so many books out there and and that's a good thing, but choose what you would like to bring in your classroom. Find literature for lower and upper elementary that you want to bring in your classroom. And it's okay to build up your library as you go, but don't get frustrated if you don't have a lot of books to use right away. And the cool thing is about working at a school is, guess what? You got a library right there (laughs) in your school building that you can go check out books as well to use in your classroom. And we're going to talk about how to do that today. All right. So the first way that you can integrate reading into music is with rhyming books. Um, Think about anything Dr. Seuss, right? There are all kinds of rhyming books. There's a whole lot of rhyming books out there. But how do you make the musical? Well, the first thing I like to do is try reading it like a rap. And you, with your older grades, maybe fourth or fifth grade, you maybe have already, um, I usually done this with third or fourth grade, have them write raps. Well, a good introduction to writing raps is to read a rhyming book or you could even do this with a rhyming poem and have them listen to it like a rap, like you're saying each word, um, I'm sorry, not each word, each line like a rap, like with a steady beat. So the dis- then discuss how the lines have the same numbers of beats, just like a poem does. Then, like I said, you can hand the kids a piece of paper, split them into groups, use any kind of technology program you want to use, and have them compose raps together after hearing how a rap goes. This is a good activity, a good way to practice their handwriting as well. So you're integrating music and reading together with rhyming books because they're hearing the way the rhyme sounds. You can explain to the kids that this is rhythms, 
But guess what? Have them keep a steady beat and explain to them that's how a steady beat is kept. Then when they write their own, they're working on writing. They're working on reading the raps they wrote. And they're also working on listening to a story by you. And then when they end up performing their raps, they'll be uh, turning it into music because they're going to have to also keep a steady beat and rhythm with the rhymes they wrote. So that, and then I'm probably already getting questions about right now, or you're thinking these questions, I should say, I'm not getting them right now, because I'm just recording this. But (laughs) what books should I use? Well, honestly, I want to tell you about, if you go to the domesticmusician.com slash shop forward slash shop and go to the very towards the bottom, there is a section that I have there with links to different Amazon books that I I titled Books for the Music Classroom. And there are a lot of suggestions there of books I love. But like I said, you might already have books you love to use. And you might already have books that have been suggested to you at different workshops or by various music teachers that you could use as well. So One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is obviously a super great rhyming book or anything by Dr. Seuss, obviously. And then um, another one is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom has a lot of rhyming words that you can use there. And you don't always have to do this activity where you're reading the story and having the kids keep a steady beat and practice the rhythm and listening to the way the rhythm goes, and then also turning it into a rap writing activity. With your younger grades, simply read the books and have them listen to the rhythms, or you could even have them with rhythm sticks, pat a steady beat while you're reading the book. And then um, another one that's really good for kindergartners or first graders, and you'll see this in this blog post I recommended, is Where Do Diggers Sleep at Night? This is really cool because you can even make it, you can even add some dynamics in here and make it where the trucks are sleeping, then they're quiet, they got to play the rhythm sticks quiet, and when it gets louder, um, when the machines get louder and they're awake, then the rhythm sticks get, get a little louder to play the rhythm or the steady beat or whatever you've instructed your students to do. So the main thing I want you to remember about the first way to integrate music and reading is rhyming books, okay? You can, I mean, guys, there's so many of them out there. So don't get stuck on which ones to use, but just find any rhyming book. Look through a book and go, do these words rhyme? Yes. Okay, perfect. So also with speech pieces, which is basically a poem that's spoken, you can add so many different instruments to this as well. You can also add instruments to different books you read too in the classroom. Like I already gave the rhythm instrument example. But with poems and speech pieces, the way you, that you make them musical is the kids can speak it. Then you can have another group playing some kind of melodic ostinato, which is just a pattern that repeats over and over with uh, mallet instruments. You can have some kids playing rhythm instruments underneath this poetry. And then you have, can have a group over here moving to the words of the poem. You can have four different activities going on at one time with just one simple poem or speech piece. I know I keep saying poem with the speech piece. So if you look at the blog post I wrote called Poetry and Music Go Hand in Hand, and you can just search for poetry and music on my blog as well. And the poem I included in this blog post for as an example, this blog, blog post is in the show notes as well, but it goes, Bonefish, Bluebird, Sheep and Flea, Chickadee, Doodlebug, Robins in a Tree, Fly in the Cream Jar, Frog in the Pool, Clap for all the children here at school. So here's an example of how I would make this musical. The kids are going to pat the steady beat while you read the poem, then clap the rhythm of the words, which just means to clap each sound, and then make each line a different dynamic level. For instance, the first line, bonefish, blue, bird, sheep, and flea. Kids can say it softly or remind them the dynamic level is piano. The second line a little louder, chickadee, doodlebug, robins in a tree, fly in the cream jar, frog in the pool, clap for all the children here at school. So they're working on dynamics. That's a way to make it musical. And then, like I said, you can add a different movement to each line with the dynamic levels you just added. The kiddos can also then begin to add instruments that maybe their one group is playing bonefish blue bird, bonefish blue bird on the drums. Maybe another one is going chickadee, chickadee, doodle bug, doodle bug, chickadee on a mallet instrument over and over. And then you got one group doing movement and then another group that's still speaking it over and over. So speech pieces is another great, a great way to integrate music into reading as well. Um, 
My favorite way to integrate reading and music is with movement books. One of my favorite books I ever found is called Dinosaur Rumpus. Okay, this book, and honestly, I think, you know, sometimes you have books handed to you or you randomly find them in like a, a discard pile or something like that. This was one of those books. It was like a book a classroom teacher was giving away. And I started flipping through the pages and I immediately, my teacher brain went into overdrive mode and I went, oh my gosh, I can do so much with this book. And here's why. Okay, so you can read books about literally anything, right? Anything. Uh, cars, trains, dinosaurs, cats, dogs, ballerinas, superheroes, anything else. And you're going to obviously read the book ahead of time by yourself so you know how it goes. <laughs> and then you are going to look for different action words in that book. Then you can instruct your students what to do for those action words. Like for instance, if the book says to jump, then they're going to jump. If it says to wiggle, they wiggle. If they say stomp or spin or twirl or crawl or whatever else, they're going to do what the action words say to do. But another way to do movement uh, movement, movement activities with books is they're not always going to say action words. And so another way to do this is to read a book and see how expressive kids can get. So for example, you can give them different phrases or say, hey, on this page, I want or these two pages, I want this group over here to act out the pages and make up some creative movement to represent the pages of this part of the book. And when I say a book, it's just a simple story. And then, you know, maybe you divide the class into four or five groups and they each are given a portion of the story. After you've already read the story, they've listened to it together. Then you divide them into groups of like four or five and they each are doing movement, creatively moving to portions of the story. And then they are, as a class, performing their different sections one at a time while you read the story together. Or you could even do it as a whole class activity where you're reading a book. And if it's not, like I said, if it's an action word, obviously they're moving to what the words tell them to do. But if it's not an action word, you can ahead of time tell them, when I say the word, um, I don't know, tree, you're going to stand up and wave your arms in the air like you're moving in the wind or whatever. Come up with different ways you want the kids to move to a story with ways they can move with action words or even without action words. Um, another great way to integrate music and reading is books about composers. Uh, obviously, one of the most famous composers is, is Beethoven. And a great book that I really like, a composer book by him, is Beethoven Lives Upstairs. This is a has a DVD or movie or whatever, um, that you can watch right along with it. But this book is awesome because it's letters. It's written in the form of letters. And so let's say your kiddos are not, have never really written a letter on paper because email is really popular nowadays, right? And so this is a great way to show them what a formal letter looks like. So you could even show them in the book, look, this is how you write a letter. You write to the person here. This is the body of the letter, how you close it out. You put a date. Perfect way to introduce, you know, writing a letter, like a handwritten letter to your kiddos. But it also talks about the composer. A great way to introduce music vocabulary as well is when you're talking about composers, they lived a long time ago. And so the old composers, like I'm talking about like from the Baroque and classical period. And so a great way to introduce music vocabulary is when you are reading these books about composers that have a lot of old words in them. Like for instance, harpsichord. How many kids really know what that is, you know? And so it these books allow you to stop and really explain what some of these things mean that kids maybe have never had the opportunity to learn before. And so just look for various composers. Maybe you like to do composer of the month. Maybe you, and by the way, in this podcast episode, the show notes, I have a link to composers of the month resource you can have. And, um, but maybe you do composer of the month. So look for various stories you can read about those particular composers. It could even be modern day composers or artists too. But different ways you can read to the kids, show them pictures, uh, ask them questions about what they learned. Um, you could even have them write about the composer of the month about what they learned and maybe write it in a letter form like we talked about earlier. That's a great way to integrate music and reading. 
Another way is musical scores. This is a great way to integrate music and reading. Why? Because by time kids, well, fourth and fifth grade, they're usually reading music. And if they're not yet, that's okay. But they are reading music from a score while they're learning recorder or amazon composers while they're learning recorder or ukulele and they or they're learning how to read different notes the different note links and you're showing them the floor staff or handing out little paper staffs for them to write on or on the smart board or however you're doing it in your classroom i'm just giving examples because everybody does it differently but while they're reading the notes on the score what i was going to say is by the time they get to middle and high school they're really reading. Choir, they will be reading words in a score, but also the notes. Band, they will be reading the notes, but they're still reading left to right. And so a musical score is a, is just another way of reading and explaining to kids this. You know what? This is make, helping, not making, helping your brain read something on a piece of paper, just like you would in a book. They'll form a connection between reading and music when they read the notes on a score. In beginning piano music, uh, when I teach beginning piano students, a lot of times those method books have words in them as well as notes. So they're multitasking and reading both things at once. And it really, music really does, you guys know that, reaches all parts of the brain. So just explaining to them, you read left to right and from top to bottom, just like you would in a story is really important. And they're um, like I said, they're forming connections in their brains without even realizing it. It's so cool. Then if your child is ready or your students are ready, they can begin writing their own music with the notes and or the words and talk about um, really challenging their brains. And guess what? Maybe they'll even go back to their regular classroom and show their teacher, hey, we've written this story. Can I make it musical? I'm going to add notes on the staff, put the story under the notes on the staff. You and that teacher end up collaborating together. And you can also collaborate with a whole lot of other things we've talked about in this episode. If a, if a teacher has a movement book and they're having, um, you know, struggles, I don't want to say struggles. What's the word I'm looking for? If they're just looking for new ideas to help their students move, then you could say, hey, you know that book you read to your kids? Get them up and move and do this activity. Or use the book I already read to them and explain them how to do it. The teacher would love that. They would love you giving them ideas and sharing ideas with them. And talk about collaboration, which your administrator is already wanting you to do anyways. You can explain to them how you want them to rhyme with their students. If they're doing poetry, how can they, you know, accentuate the... Um, poetry with their students and make it musical have them keep their have their students keep a steady beat on their desk while they're reading the poetry the teachers are going to love that even if they're not musical they will know uh, giving them simple ideas to use in their classroom to help integrate music they will love that and so we talked about musical scores and they can honestly like I said they can tie this back into what they're doing in their classroom and then the last one I want to talk about is storybooks. Showing your kids the pictures on the page of a book. You're reading, for example, about a jazz composer, and they're going to form a connection with what you're reading. Please don't forget the importance of sh just showing the kids a story or just having them sit there and listen to you read. The kids love being read to. And yes, even the older students, they will love to be read to even if they act like they don't want to be. Okay. Um, so just sitting there and reading to them, they will form connections about what they're hearing. And then you can ask questions about what you're reading and to see who's retaining it. That's a good assessment opportunity. Read them books about musical genres, time periods, different artists and composers. They're going to learn so much by just hearing you read aloud to them. So I hope you got something from this. And I love hearing different ways that you're integrating music and reading in your classrooms. So keep it up and let me know. Send me a direct message on Instagram at Jessica Preston. Let me know how are you integrating music with your students? I would love to hear all about it. And I can share it with everyone else on my Instagram when you share it with me as well. You guys have an amazing day. Keep on keeping on and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes.
To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.